Sanctification, your what? The decision. The decision. Or if you are grammarian, you can tell it to be your decision for sanctification. But I said, sanctification, your decision. Sanctification is God's will for us. I want to understand that sanctification is God's will for us. Why is it God's will? It is very important for us to understand that the word sanctification, the word sanctification, is related to the word saint. S-A-I-N. Saint, which is holiness. Sanctification, your decision. So it will be your decision this month to be able to stand on the path of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To sanctify is to set apart for special use. Yes. To sanctify is to set apart for what? Special use. For special use. So tell somebody, I am special. I am special. And I will be used of God. Hallelujah. To sanctify means to be set apart for special use. To sanctify a person is to make him or her holy or pure. Are you hearing me? So, I want to understand very well, when we come to the word sanctification, somebody will be saying that, why are we saying this this time? We want to be set apart for God's use. We want God to use us. We want God to use us to deliver other people that are in darkness. People who are lost. People who are confused about their lives on the street. People who don't know about Christ. We want to be set apart to be used of God. Now, when you set something apart, apart, you don't use it anyhow. Are you hearing me? You don't use it what? Anyhow. anyhow. Because that thing is set apart for a particular use in your life. Amen. I want us to go ahead again this morning. It's very important. John chapter 17, verse number 16 to 17. Jesus says something that I want us to look at very well. King James Version. John chapter 17, 16 to 17. John 6, 17. John chapter 17. The Bible said, they are not of the world. They are not of the world. Go, on, go back, you can start again. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. All right, go ahead. The Bible said, sanctify them through what? Okay, let's let's all read on the ball. Let's all read on the ball. People are not people are not connecting with me. Amen. Verse number sixteen. Go. Verse number sixteen. Let's read. Verse number sixteen. No, let's go. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Amen. So they are not of the world. Amy, the Father Himself is not of the world. So what he said is that sanctify them through what? Truth. Now, I said, when you are sanctifying something, it means you are setting it apart. When the word of God comes in, it comes through the truthfulness of its own power. And this word has come to separate us from darkness. So the word is the light, and then the word has delivered us from that darkness. Amen. So the word is truth. Amen. So, say the word is true. Sanctification is a separation unto God. Sanctification is what? A separation unto God. You want to set your side, yourself aside for God to use you in a unique way, in a particular way. Amen. So I want us to pay attention this morning that God will use us mightily in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 16. Let us look at a scripture over here and examine something that God wants to do for us this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 16, verse number, chapter 2, verse number 16. 2 Timothy 2, 16. The Bible says, But shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat us what? Of God the canker. Of him is what? Alright, so now I want all of us to look on the board. We're going to read right now. 
I want you to take the word because if you don't take the word, you will not understand my message. The message will be, will be flying by your ears. And may, not, may it not fly today by your ears. Amen. Amen. Now let's go ahead. The Bible says again, verse 16. But shun profane and vain babbling. Can you give us a different, a different version? Give us a different version. If you can give us NIV or maybe uh, uh, NLT or something like that. Mm -hmm. I want people to understand. Avoid godless what? Chatter. Because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. So, if you are sanctifying yourself for the law, and you are setting yourself apart for God, you have to take your mouth out of certain conversation. Come on now. <laughs> are you hearing me? Yeah. It's not everything you open your mouth to talk about. You must watch what you say. Because the Bible says, avoid godly shadow. Because those who indulge in those kind of things will become more and more ungodly. You become disconnected from the world. So you must avoid them. Verse number 17 says, go ahead, what did he say? Verse number 17. Their teaching will spread like what? Gangry among Okay, do we have something here on the board? God will help us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you have the Bible with me, read for me. 2 Timothy 2.16. 2 Timothy 2.16, verse number 17. Sanctify Anybody there? Sanctify them. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2. 16. For shun profane and vain babbling. Yes. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Mm -hmm. And their word will eat as doors a canker, mm -hmm. of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already mm -hmm. and overthrow the faith of some. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Mm -hmm. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Mm -hmm. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let every name of what? Let a what? What's the last sentence? Let what did he say? Everyone confess that the name of the name of Christ depart from the name. Everyone that was name of the Lord. Thank you. Everyone that is called a Christian to do what? You must depart from what? The name of the Lord must be turned away from wickedness, from iniquity. Now, if you want to set yourself apart from God, you have to take your way out of certain conditions in your life. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Every desire of man is at the mercy of demands from God. Every desire of man is at the mercy of demand from God. What I mean is that every time we desire something, God himself in his, in, in his compassion will give it to us, not by our own will, by his own power. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Listen very carefully. Sanctification. So somebody saying that, why are we talking about sanctification this morning or this month? It's because sanctification empowers us to get more hunger and more hungry and taste for God. Sanctification empowers you to get more hungry for God, to get more taste for God. When you have, you are sanctified for God, there is something inside of you that is craving that you want to do for God all the time. Amen. But when you are operating in the flesh, the church of God or the worship of God is nothing to you. It does not mean anything to you at all. So when you are sanctified, it empowers us to have more hunger and taste for God. Amen. Amen. Now, until you make a decision for sanctification, you cannot enter into glorification. Until you make a decision for sanctification, you cannot enter into what? Glorification. I will explain to you what that means. Now, if you want to be glorified by God, you cannot live on righteous life and be glorified by God. True or false? No, 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 tell me true or false. Now, the, thing, the issue here is that a lot of us want to have our lifestyle connected to the world. 
out there in the world and we want to do things of the world and the same thing expecting the Lord to do his own will in our life just somebody be careful be careful. No, 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 just somebody be careful. be careful every individual ultimate glorification is determined by what their decision of sanctification so you are asking yourself it is your own decision to separate yourself for God God wants to use you God wants to lift you higher and God wants to use you as a personal tool or personal instrument in his hand so that you can become so powerful go to 2nd Timothy again chapter 2 verse number 20 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse number 20 I want us to read that scripture and I want you to understand something here that when we come to church you see some people serving God some people are serving God very very wonderfully very powerfully and other people are serving God just partially and other so you will see here he said in a large house there are articles not only of gold and what silver, silver. but also of wood and also of what okay. of clay some are for special purposes and some are for what go ahead for common use go ahead those who cleanse themselves from the latter listen to me those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special what? purposes made what? holy useful what? to the master and prepare to do what? Oh, you're not ready, really, you're not ready, really, you're not ready really for me. Go back to last week again. Open your eyes. Those who claim themselves, those who separate themselves and set themselves apart for the use of God, for the latter will become instrument for special purposes. So if you want God to use you mightily up there and to see the evidence of the power of God manifesting in your life, you get to separate yourself for that use. Amen. It's very important. Amen. No, it's very, very important. You cannot live any, you cannot live life anyhow and expect God, the Holy Ghost, to move in your life. It doesn't work that way. I must speak to somebody. So, so the, and made holy to be used by the master and prepared to do what? Good works. Prepared to be do what? Good work. So here, if you actually want to go to use you, it is your choice. It is your choice to set yourself apart from him. Now, people don't understand this. They don't understand this. They think that, you know what, we all come to church and we all worship God every time. So the worship of God is at the same level. No, my faith is different from your faith. Are you hearing me? Amen. You can be here for five years or six years. Somebody with the faith of God, who believes in God and walk in the righteousness of God and doing the will of God will enter the house and bypass you. But may that not be your portion. Amen. I said, may it not be your portion. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Come on, can I hear a louder amen? amen. May it not be your portion amen. in the name of Jesus. Every promise of God is naturally resisted by the devil naturally resistant. you don't have to do anything to anybody to hate you that's why I am here to give a message to somebody here maybe that message is for you the Bible says I lift up my eyes to the hill where cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which make the heavens and the air turn to somebody and tell the person the Lord God Almighty will help you are you hearing me? When a man says they will not help you, allow them. Because they are not God. The God that brought you here, the God that makes way for you in the wilderness will bypass the protocol of man. When you are walking in the ways of God and your ways pleases the Lord, he will help you and no man will understand it. May that become your portion in the name of Jesus. We are sick and tired of people. Let me tell you something. I tell, I, I tell, see, when God uses people, God is using people to help you. It is good for God to use somebody to help you. God will use somebody to open the door for you. Hey. And when you enter the door, He will close the door behind them. Hey. Because that door does not belong to them. I am here to tell you in the name of Jesus. Hey. When you think that nobody can help you, I am here to tell the Lord, God will help you. Hey. My God will help you.
help you. Say, God will help me. In every season, in every condition that I find myself in. So don't make yourself God. Amen. And tell yourself, if not because of me, they will not succeed. You lie. Only God's help. Are you hearing me? If not because of me, you will not be able to get there. No. You are just a privilege for God to use as a channel to help the person. So humble yourself. Then I say here on Wednesday that anytime we do something for somebody, it's not what you give the person, it's your motive behind what you give the person. So if your motive is correct, God will bless it. Are you hearing me? When you set yourself apart for God, and you are sanctified by the Holy Ghost, and the fire of God is inside of you, when the devil sees you, they know you are a light unto God. May you become light. Amen. Tell somebody, I am light. I am light. Oh, you don't understand that. I am light. You don't understand that. How many of you have walked through the darkness before? Maybe in your, in your house, in your house. Do you know that without light in your room, when your room becomes dark, and you walk anyhow, you will hurt yourself? Yes. Do you know that? Yes. Oh, yes. You will hurt yourself. Even your own clothes that is hanging in the closet, when you are passing by and the light is off, you will think somebody has entered to touch your body. Yes. When it touches you, you will scream. Because light is very important. The only way we can get the light of God is to separate ourselves from the things of the world and allow God to show that light inside of you. Yes. And you become light to your family. Yes. I said, you become light to your family. Yes. Tell somebody, I am light. I am light. Wherever I go, Wherever I, go. I shine. Yes. I can never be sought. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are light. Amen. When they see you, they see light in front of you. Amen. That's why it's not good for you to wake up early in the morning and frown your face. <laughs> As if the whole world is against you. Put on the praises of God. Let your spirit be rekindled. Let the power of God inside of you illuminate and bring light out of you. Yes, I understand that you may be angry. Somebody might provoke you. But every time, don't allow them to push you to the wall. I told you that last week I was talking to somebody. and the I said it on Wednesday. Or maybe on Wednesday. I said, the person said, ah, I said, what is wrong with you? He said, pray for me. I said, so what was the problem for me to pray for you? He said, they are pressing my button. People are pressing my button. My buttons. So they are, I said, if they are pressing your buttons, remove the battery. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. If you have a remote control and somebody is pressing your remote control, what do you need to do? Take the battery. Disconnect it. Yes. He said, what do you mean by that? And I said, what I mean by that is in Proverbs 1911. Yeah. Give it to them. Proverbs 1911. Right. When you read it from Proverbs 1911, you will understand what I'm talking about. I can stand here and you can be pressing my button, but all I know is this, the discretion of a man, deferred anger. B, it is to his glory to overlook what? An NIV. Is that what which, which version is that? King James. Can you give me another, another version? NIV or something? Let me show you to them. Okay, good. Thank you. A person's wisdom yields what? Does somebody be patient? Oh, say, 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 say. Be patient. It is to one's glory to overlook. That is the battery out of the remote. Overlook. overlook. Tell somebody overlook. overlook. It's not everything you pay attention to. He said they are pressing my battery. They are, I said remove the battery. If the, battery if, the, if the remote is not active, they will not press it. Even if they press it, it will not work. What it means is that when you don't pay attention to what people say, God will lift you up and glorify you. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. So, I urge you to sanctify yourself. Before the law, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 48. Let's go ahead. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 48. Be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly father is what? Perfect. I said, tell somebody be perfect. Perfect. Yes, you are not you are not you are not perfect right now, but you can strive towards perfection. He said, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Sometimes when you are living your life for God, people will give you middle name. 
righteous. It's because you are righteous, that's why you don't want to do it. Do you know some people can do something right now and run away and they will not be caught? Huh? But you try it. One time. One time. <laughs> are you hearing me? Yes. Just try it one time. And you become a burden or yoke on your neck. Yes. And so if you refuse to do it, they give you name. So you are holy holy. Yes, the Bible says be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly father is what? Perfect. So in everything I do, every day of my life, I say, God, I want to die daily because of your grace. Now, there are some things that will prevent you. Two things that will prevent you seriously from being sanctified. Number one, the spirit of the world. Write it down. Somebody say the spirit. The spirit of the world. Of the, world. the spirit of the world. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 12. This thing can prevent you. Seriously. There are many of them, but I will mention only two. The spirit of the world. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 12. Ha ha ha. We're gonna be looking at something right now. The Lord is our good God. Amen. Bible says. What we have received is not the spirit of the world. Put, personalize it. Remove the weed. How do you read that? What I have received is not the spirit of the world. But the spirit of what? But the spirit that is from God. The spirit that liveth in you is not the spirit of the world. That's why when some Christians go to parties and they go to places, they say, ah, today is no church. But where we are is a party, so let's change the gear. Let's mm. change the gear. Mm. Pastor is not there. Mm -hmm. Church elder is not there. Church dignity is not there. So let's change the gear. As soon as they put the worldly music on, you see them breaking their legs. Breaking their legs. I see everything else is wrong. The Bible says, oh, I have received what we have received. It's not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. So that we may what? Understand what God has freely given us. When you have the spirit of God inside of you, it makes you understand your free gift. Go ahead. The Bible says again, go ahead. This is what we speak, not in words, taught by God human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual reality with spiritual thoughts, words. Now, how many of you want wisdom? <laughs> how many of you want wisdom? <laughs> Are you hearing me? You will understand what I'm talking about until you enter, until you enter the spirit realm, you will know what I'm talking about. He said, this is what we speak. Paul is saying, not in words taught us by God, human or wisdom, but in words taught by God, the Spirit. So anything God has given you is being taught by the Spirit will yield fruit in your life. Amen. Your amens are very epileptic. Amen. Explaining spiritual realities with what? Spirit taught words. Spiritual what? Realities. Spiritual what? Reality. So he said, verse number 13. This one was 14. Go ahead. 14. Say what? The person without the spirit. Now listen to this. <laughs> Today your mentality will change. Amen. You will stop fighting people. The person without the spirit does not accept the thing that comes from the spirit of God. That's why when you tell people we are having four days of prayer and fasting, they say, ah. Pastor, every day. The pastor for pastor is fine. He's the pastor of the church. Allow him to fast and pray. We will be eating. When you call for prayer meeting, people disappear. Why? The person without the spirit does not understand the thing that comes from the spirit of God. But consider them what? Foolishness. And cannot what? Understand them because they are discerned only through what? The spirit. Tell someone you need the spirit of discernment. That's why when I stand here and I say something, people say, people look at me and say, how did you know? 
<laughs> so how did you know? You must be a man of the spirit, a woman of the spirit. People of God, make the enemy know and understand that what lives in you is the fire of God. It's the spirit of God that cannot quench. So this man of June, I beseech you by the mercies of God to go and run for the spirit. Let the spirit of God be rekindled inside of you. Set yourself apart and say, Lord, I am of a use to you. The spirit of the world. The spirit of the world says that, you know what? It doesn't matter because we are not in church. We, let, 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 let's, let, let, let's polish it. Let's do it differently. God is not looking at that. You lie. And when you come to church, he said, Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. And the Lord God Almighty who is in heaven looking down on you and looking into your spirit and looking into your heart and knowing exactly who you are. Yes. Tell somebody God is not mocked. Say so you cannot mock God. Mock God. No. He knows exactly. So you go after the spirit of God. The person who does not have the spirit of God will not accept the spirit, the things of God. So, me, the competition right here is not the material stuff. When my brother is praying and manifestations and sicknesses are being healed and the lame man is walking, I come and say, brother, I, I am with you. I want to hang up with you. I want, I want us to go in the realm of the spirit. But when the brother, the other brother said, no, I don't want to be there today, but I want to hang out with alcohol. Someone say, mercy. 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 Did you drink some yesterday? No. <laughs> Before I start calling your name. You don't have to call your name. You don't believe me? The things of the world are revealed by the Spirit of God. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. And it's how could you manage yourself in that way and play around and think that it is very okay? It's not okay. That's why you see envious, jealousy, backbiting, gossip, second, first, 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 lower gossip, upper gossip, middle gossip, black one, little one, big one, all gossip are gossips. When they are in the flesh, you don't understand the things of God. All I want to do is that when I look at my brother, Mr. Obed, I want to see the goodness of God upon his life. And I ask God, Father, promote him. Yeah. Father, lift him higher. Yeah. When I see my sister Octavia, I say, God, make a way where there seems to be no way. Yeah. When it happened to her, I said, I celebrate with you. When I look at my sister Rosemont, I say, I see the grace of God upon your life. When things yeah. are not good for you, it's not good for me. If it's not good for Pastor Momo, it's not good for me. If it's not good for you, it's not good for me. Yeah. So we are one body. Yeah. Serving one God. Yeah. That's no division. Are you hearing me? True worship in God will give you the hunger to test after God every day. It's not Monday you are hot. Kataparata, Pushara, Bakinda, Hey, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And what does it come? He said, Only God knows so. May that not be your portion. I said, May he not be your portion. He says, Tell somebody to be fire for God, be on fire for God. No, 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 tell somebody to be on fire for God. The second thing that will make you, or that will prevent you being sanctified is number one, number two, the spirit of lying. Lying spirit. Somebody say lying spirit. Lying spirit. Lying. Lying. You know what I'm talking about. You are late and they call you, where are you? <laughs> He said, I'm just by the traffic light. You lie. You are not leaving your house. People. Amen. They go for a person. Take your time, my friend. Are you hearing me? A lying spirit will make you. And the father of lies is Satan. And he has no remorse for lying. So, what I want to do this morning is if you want to see the genuineness. Of God's worship come upon your life. Be transparent. Be open. Amen. 
When you are open, nobody can stop you. Lie is me. And I uh, see, the difficult part of the whole subject is when you have worldly people who are lying, people, unbelievers who are lying, it's okay. You know why? Because they don't have the wisdom. They don't have the understanding. But you have people who are convicted and they speak first degree and second degree tongues. And they lie. Somebody say lying. Lie. Say, say, say lying. Lie. Say the spirit of lying. Lie. May the spirit of lying be cast out of your life. Lie. I said, may it be cast out of your life. Lie. Do you know that when you lie and say, ah, my boss, I woke up this morning and something was running behind my back. All of my body, which is not through, you're just tired. <laughs> the Bible says, life and death lieth in the power of the tongue. For they that love it, eat the, the, the tree thereof, for the fruit thereof. When you declare negative, negative pursues your life. But when you speak positive stuff and say, Lord, I know it is not easy. I know God knows how to intervene. Amen. Lying spirit will not allow you. When you lie, do you know that it's very difficult? Do you know it's very difficult to tell a lie than to tell the truth? You don't know? Okay, I'll tell you why. When you lie that you are 20 minutes, you are 5 minutes away, meanwhile you are 20 minutes away from your house. When something happens and you are delayed, from that 20 minutes, you will have to create another lie to cover up the first lie. No lie. We have righteous people in the house. No, 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 no. Right. Lying spirit makes you negatively creative. <laughs> Do you know somebody can be positively creative? Yeah. And somebody can be negatively creative. Yeah. When some people lie, hmm. when they tell lies, you will, you will sit down and ask yourself, is that person correct? When they tell lies, serious lies, I mean, all lies are lies. When they sit down, negative, how could you sit down to create lies in the spirit of the world? It will not make you to pray. It will not make you to fast. It will not make you to be connected to God. You will become the agent of lies every time of your life. Today, I pray for you. If there is any condition that you, which you, you are today, May the Lord take you out of that condition. Yeah. Oh, can I hear a louder amen? Yeah. And the people are not responding because they, they say, oh, no, no, Pastor Carl, you, you don't know what you are talking about. <laughs> you know, being in that situation, you will know what I'm talking about. Hey, let me tell you something. Whether you like it or not, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Period. Amen. There's no other way. Yes. There's no what? Other, other way. way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. So you cannot bend the rule. I understand that we are not perfect. So we are striving towards perfection in our life. So therefore, don't give room to the enemy yes. to give you lies every day. Some people, when they tell lies, they feel good. They enjoy it. It's like a salad with a, 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 a salad with the French fries. <laughs> you have down before. Meet me there. I'll, I'll show you to wait, wait, wait. salad with French fries. <laughs> uh, you think your pastor doesn't eat salad? Yes? <laughs> salad with French fries. Bishop is looking at me. What is he talking about? Salad with French fries. You see, you put grass <laughs> on top of potato <laughs> mixed with oil. <laughs> <laughs> it's mm. easily swallowed. Mm. Mm. But I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Are you hearing me? When you have the spirit of lies, it makes you negatively creative. Yeah. Yeah. In everything that appears before you is not even the truth at all. When they present truth to you, you will bend it to be lies. Now, how do you feel when you compose lies? How do you feel? And the same guy called the adversary, called the enemy, the devil, has the remote control. 
And when you lie the first one, you will put it on and increase the volume and ask you to do it again. May God forgive us. Amen. I said, may the Lord forgive you. Amen. In the month of June, may you step on righteous places. Amen. May you step on pleasant places. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, in the month of June, Amen. may you step on pleasant places. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What decision my wish must we make? Or what steps must we take? to be able to get that sanctification. Number one, engage in spiritual exercise. So I'm talking about sanctification. What steps can we take to be able to get to that level? Engage in what? Spiritual what? Exercise. Come on to spiritual exercise. Acts chapter 24 verse number 16. Acts 24 verse number 16. Engage. What are the steps we are supposed to take in order for us to be sanctified or to get to that sanctification mode? Acts chapter 24, 16. The Bible says, So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. It must be an exercise. Increase it for me. Yes. So he says, So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before what? So if somebody is striving always, what is happening? It's an exercise. It's a spiritual exercise. Go ahead, verse number 17. Let's look at what it said. After an absence of several years, I came to Jerusalem to bring my people gifts for the poor and to present offering. Now, we're going to dwell on the 16th. He said what? 16 says what? Look at it. And so I strive always, not some time. Let somebody strive always. Strive always. Now, what are the spiritual exercises I'm talking about? The exercise of prayer, the exercise of studying the word, the exercise of fasting, the exercise of doing the will of God in general. So I strive always to keep my conscience clear. Tell somebody, keep your conscience clear. Keep your conscience clear. Are you hearing me? Some of the time, especially the people who can forget things very fast one of the things that i have come to observe in life people who tell lies people who tell lies forget very fast mm -hmm. ah. this one is by serious this is by serious studio. people who tell lies forget very fast why because it's not the truth so when you ask them you said Oh, but you told me you were going to San Francisco. Oh, no, I didn't say that. No, 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 I didn't say that. Maybe you heard something. Ah, you told me. They didn't make you a fool. So people who tell lies forget very fast. But the spiritual exercise here is, he said, I strive always. Yeah. I strive what? Oh. Always. To keep my conscience clear before God and man. When you are doing something wrong, there are three people who are available. Anytime you engage to do something bad or something evil, there are three people who are available. Present right there as you are doing it. Yourself, the Holy Spirit of God, and the devil. You don't know? There are three people who are available. You might be there and be standing there and thinking that nothing is happening. There is somebody in the spirit, there is a spirit that is watching you. God above you is watching you. Amen. And your conscience alone will not free you from doing what you want to do. May God help us. Amen. I said, may God help us. Amen. I said, may the Lord help you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Point number two. Engage, number one, engage in spiritual exercise. Point number two. Crave the spirit of obedience. Crave the spirit of what? Obedience. Crave the spirit of obedience. Crave the spirit of obedience. Crave it. Crave it. Crave it. You are hungry for obedience. You are hunger. You have hunger for obedience. But because you refuse not to obey, you fall into temptation. We fall into diverse temptation. True. When you are craving for the spirit. Hey of obedience. Father, may your will be done. May I do your will. 
whether I am hungry or not, I will not go to the shopping mall and steal. I remember we prayed for some people two years ago. And the person said, I said, the person told me, I want a job. They gave a job to the person. I right there in, uh, in Target. And the person, and they, and they are giving you overtime. And giving you hours. And the person had to steal after closing and put it inside. <laughs> and buckled and tied it. He did it the first time. No catch. The second one, no caught. So far, catch, caught. <laughs> the third one will be what? Catch it. Did the first one no catch? The second one no cut. So the third, the one, so the third one will be what? Catch cut. Are you hearing me? Until just a small. After all the big one, it was just a small lipstick. What was the lipstick? Lipstick. Lipstick. lipstick small one. Then they put something in here. And the security man was waiting. <laughs> and he said, I want to search you. Ah, my God, no, well, who dare you? No, no. You know how they do you? They said, no, 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 hold on. So now the manager and everybody came around. Just because of small. After the catch and the pot. <laughs> it is a small one. That one is not a big one. And they took it. So now they said, we want to play to you all the videos mm -hmm. of what you have been doing. Okay. And guess what? Translate that into your spiritual realm. Mm. Translate it right now into the spiritual realm. Do you know what God is recording? Mm -hmm. Do you know what is being recorded? He's not here. He's a spirit. But in heaven, eternity, on that day when the trumpet shall sound. And all people will be raptured. And judgment room has been opened. Yes. Cloud is watching. Yes. So they play all the video. They said, This is what this is what transpired in the few weeks we've been there. Freshly for only one month. Mm -hmm. But just just a small one. After the catch and the court, it was catch court. <laughs> and when the catch court was underlined, that's my own English. Don't go and speak it anyway. <laughs> that should be in trouble. Amen. They examine, they say, you know what? Today, that person is, is, is crying to get a job. You know why? When they do background check, mm -hmm. when you have new jobs, it pops up. Yes. Hey, catch court. Yes. And it shows catch court. Yes. Raise the power too. It pops up. How do you intend to clean that? What I want to tell us today is. Be very careful what we do. Yes. Let's be very careful. The spirit of obedience before you even attempt to do it, the spirit of God will speak to you and tell you, son, daughter, don't try it. But you will say, I am very skillful and I have the power, I can swear. <laughs> you will be swearing, but there is only one day. Several days for the master, one day for the one. For the team. So you have to be very careful. The spirit of obedience. When you listen to the voice of God, you listen to the word of God, obey the word of God, and you will be out of trouble. Amen. Let me give you that scripture. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? And people are not hearing me, so they don't say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. John chapter 8, verse number 29. And then somebody read Ezekiel chapter 36, 27. I'll be closing very soon. John 8, 29, Ezekiel 36, 27. John 8, 29. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. <laughs> Do you hear what I said? The one who sent me is with me. And he has no more. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Amen. I want you to understand that the Lord who brought you here on earth is still with you. Amen. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? Amen. amen. 
Are you hearing me? Yeah. So you must do always what pleases him. The one who sent you is with me. Jesus said that. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. So you are not alone. Tell somebody, I am not alone. I am not alone. Or say it with boldness, I am not alone. Ezekiel chapter 36, 27. What did he say? Ezekiel 36, 27. That the Bible says, I will put my spirit in you. Say, I receive it. I receive it. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my word. Do you have it over there? I will put my spirit in you. Aha. Which is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of anointing, the anointing of God. The spirit of knowledge. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to be careful to keep my word. I want you to pray this prayer this week. Ezekiel 36, 27. Lord, put your spirit in me. If you pray that prayer this week, you will see the spirit of God manifesting. Lord, put your spirit. When you have the spirit of God, there is no fear that can approach you. Because the spirit of God overcomes every trial of your life. Point number three. Is number three or number four? The decision that we make or the steps. Number three, keep the right company. Somebody say, keep the right company. Keep the right company. Or say it louder. Keep the right company. Number three, if you want to be sanctified and enjoy your sanctification, keep the right company. When you don't keep the right company, you will be doing the right thing at the right place, at the wrong place. When you don't keep the right company, you will do the right thing at the wrong place. Why? Because the Bible says, do not be equally yoked with one. Oh, say that scripture. Do you not be what? Okay. Your association determines your manifestation. Are you hearing me? There is a word that they say in our language. Show me your friend what? Say it again. Show me your friend. Ah, mercy and atonement. Show me your friends. And I will show you who you are. That tells a lot. If you want to be sanctified and set yourself apart, you must keep the right company. There are some people, they don't need to be around you. Because all they speak is negative. Even if you prove to them, I can work. God gave me the ability to work and I can be able to finish it. They will tell you it's not possible. Keep the right company. The company that will lift up your spirit. A company, a friend that will prov that will provoke you to pray. A friend that will provoke you into business and say, This business is good. Let's do it. Not the one that will tell you, you know what? Huh? It's not working for people. Why do you want to try it now? No. Keep the right company. There are people at your job, at your job. They wish you are not even there. Pray for them. That the mercy of God and the love of God will come upon them. And they will know how to love people. Amen. You don't need to associate yourself. When you know, typically, physically, that these people are of no positive words. All that comes out of their mouth is negative. No. You are born as a seed to germinate and to bear fruit. Yeah. Anybody who is not willing to bear fruit, do what? Cut them, them off. Amen. There are some children that when they come around your children, all they know to do is the negative words. Mm. They curse, they insult, they abuse, they yell, they shout. I don't need you around. No. I don't need you around. Because before you realize, influence will take place. And when it takes place, then you want to go back and you pray to the Father. I'll you. And you saw it when it was happening. 
especially with the parents in America. I said, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Leave them alone. It's okay. Mm. They're going to cope with that. Uh, I know how to speak Spanish. Right? Yeah. They're going to cope with that. Don't worry. It doesn't matter. They're just growing their kids. Who told you? You have to stop it now. Mm -hmm. You have to train a child the way it should grow. That when it grows, they will not depart from the Lord. It doesn't matter. It's okay. No. That everyone is doing it does not mean that you should also allow them to do it. Am I making sense to somebody? Yes. Mm -hmm. I want you to sleep peacefully at night. That's why I'm preaching this way. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. So keep what? Right keep what? The right company. Now let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 13. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse number 33. Can you go back to verse number 31 a little bit, please? Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Second Samuel, yeah. The Bible said the king stood up, tore his clothes, and lay down on the ground. And all his attendants stood by him with their clothes on. Go ahead. But Jonadab. Now, this guy here, he was a friend, a very good friend to another one. Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother, said, My Lord should not think that they kill all the princes in Oli. Amon is dead. Jonadab is a friend to Amon. He has given bad advice to Amon. And the same people or the same person who has given bad advice to Amon that he is dead has gone to the father to tell the father that your son is dead. The same person who betrayed you or who is betraying you is the same person who will come to you or who will go and announce you. I decree in the spirit that anybody who announced evil about you may God handle them. Amen. Go ahead. This has been something. Go ahead. This has been Absalom's express intention ever since the day Ammon raped his sister Tamar. Now listen to me. You are here and I am trying to speak to somebody here that if you are if you are sensing in yourself that there is something that is pushing you to do something you're not supposed to do ask God to give you the strength Amen. and you will overcome Amen. Because, Amen. Are very weak. Amen. because I'm not prophesying today so you will not, you will not respond <laughs> number four put on the armor of God yeah. if you want to be sanctified and enjoy sanctification, do what? Put on the armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Romans chapter 12, verse number 13. Put on the armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Romans 12, 13. Finally, the conclusion. Put on the armor of God. Romans 12, 13. What did he say? That's my last point. Romans 12, 13. Share with the lost people who are in need. Practice what? Hospitality. Practice what? Hospitality. Hospitality. Put on the armor of God. Go ahead to verse number 14. Go ahead. Verse number 14. Bless those who persecute you. And bless those who what? And bless and do not curse. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and don't curse. Ah, somebody did something to you and say, you know what? Let me go to church and come back. I'll show you to know that me too I have strength inside of me. So let me come back from church. Right now, I'm going to church. I'm going to pray. I'm going to worship God. When I come back, we will answer that. No. The Bible says, bless those who persecute you. There are some people, you can hear them talk about you. You can hear them say some stuff about you. You can hear your name over there. Praise God for their life. You know why? Because they don't have the same knowledge you have. When their eyes is open, they will know what they are doing is evil. That's what Jesus said. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Shall we pray? Amen. Holy Spirit, we just want to thank you. I want you to lift up your voice and pray right now. Look at all 
that I have said right now and fix yourself and ask God. Maybe there is something that you are doing or there's something that is happening that God is not happy about. You want to pray, say, Lord, I surrender to you. Lord, I ask you. Lord, I am before you. Lord, I am nothing before you, but I have come to present myself to you. Oh, Jesus, I declare in the name of Jesus that at this moment, may the Lord reach out to you.